In this video, we're going to use sine or cosine to calculate the sling loading. We've talked about sling loading in class. That's the, that's the effect that an angled sling can have on the force imposed on the sling. Uh, you know, that's the brief version. If you have any questions about that, you know, we've covered it in class. Uh, now, there are several problems that I'm going to work through to illustrate how we use sine or cosine to calculate sling loading, but I'm going to break down each of those examples into a separate video. If I try to include them all into one video, it's going to make like a 30-minute video, which is not good. So try to keep each video under seven or eight minutes, hopefully, and, uh, and there'll be multiple. I think I've got five examples that I want to work through with you um, on this particular topic. Uh, now, disclaimer here, uh, this is not how riggers do this. This is not how crane operators, this is not how engineers do this for the most part. And engineers are more likely to use sine or cosine or trigonometry than anyone else, else who has uh, something to do with crane operations. But this is not the normal way of doing it. The only reason I'm covering this is because of the CSP exam or if you need to take the ASP exam. The types of problems that I'm going to show you are very common on those exams. Uh, the BCSP, they want to test your ability to use basic trigonometry. Speaking of basic trigonometry, you should have already watched the video where I cover sine, cosine, and tangent, those basic functions, and kind of explain uh, how all those work and what they are and so on, what the formulas are. You should watch that video before you watch this video. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right into an example. Again, this is for CSP stuff. Um, and this is an example. What you see on the screen right now is an example of what you may see on the CSP exam. You might see a, a question stem, and I need to put a question mark on this. You might see the question stem along with the diagram, and you're asked to calculate the sling loading based upon the information in the diagram. Again, what is the force sling loading? applied to each leg of the sling in the rigging diagram to the right. And the reason this is important uh, for real world rigging, again real world riggers are going to use the riggers method, they're not going to do it this way. They could if they wanted to, but they're not going to. But the, the value in this is to understand what the load is on each of these legs. Because it's not, there's two legs, but the loading is not 22,120 pounds divided by two. Because of the angle, because of the distance from the center of gravity, the force actually increases above the number of legs um, times two. So again, let's get into this. Uh, you see a problem like this on the CSP or other certification exam, I recommend drawing a simple diagram re representing the problem on your scrap paper on your worksheet. You'll have a piece of scrap paper that they will give you. You can't take your own. Uh, you have to use their paper, but you can work out the different problems on the CSP exam on that scrap paper. And I recommend just recreating a diagram like this, like the one that you will see on the computer screen. It won't be a pencil and paper test. CSP is almost exclusively, to my knowledge, it's always a computer-based exam. So you'll see this on the computer, and on your scrap paper, you'll draw out something like this. It doesn't have to be pretty like this. I'm cheating, I'm using a computer, and you'll be using a pencil and paper. It doesn't have to be pretty as long as it helps you keep track of your calculations and the different variables. Okay. Once you have everything diagrammed, simply divide load weight by the number of sling legs. We have two sling legs. Our load weight is 22,120 pounds, so divide that make that division. Let me pull my calculator over here. And that's a, that's a simple mathematical uh, procedure there, but let's go ahead and do it on the calculator. We've got 22, 1, 2, 0, divided by 2. Enter. 11,060. Okay. After we divide the weight by the number of sling legs we want to bisect the right or the rigging triangle put a line right through the middle of that triangle which creates two right triangles we have a right triangle over here on the left and a right triangle over here on the right 
Now the 11,060, we're going to treat that as a force vector and let it represent the vertical side of the right triangle. And you know, we're only using one of these right triangles, so we can ignore this one. We'll just work off of this one over here where we have our 52 degrees identified, or 50 de 52 degree horizontal or angle to the horizontal represented. Once we have completed uh, these steps, the next step is simply using the sine function along with the sling angle and the 11,060, we can use those two values with the sling angle or with the sine function to calculate the sling loading, which will be the hypotenuse. Again, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. And if this is our reference angle, the opposite is this side, represented by 11,060, and the hypotenuse is this side here. So, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Go ahead and plug in the value for the opposite. Uh, we need to solve for H. And this is not how I would normally do it. I'm taking some extra steps to show you what's going on mathematically with the, uh, with the uh, transfiguration of this formula. I'm taking sine 52 and putting that over 1. So we have sine 52 over 1 equals 11,060 over H. Now we cross multiply. When we cross multiply, it looks like this. We have sine 52 times H equals 1 times 11,060. We divide both sides by sine 52. The sine 52 cancels on this side and we end up with 11,060 divided by sine 52. Now we take the sine of 52. Let's go ahead and bring our calculator back up. Just enter sine 52, enter. And it's 0.788. For our purposes, I'm going to round that to 0.79. Now the last step is dividing the 11,060 by 0.79 divided by 0.79 enter and we come up with 14,000 pounds of sling tension in this leg of the sling and that's pretty much it. Again, the sling loading on a single leg of the two-leg sling is 14,000 pound force. And usually we just say pounds, but technically the correct term is pound force. Uh, when we do a metric problem, they have different units. And for imperial units, uh, we're, we're pound force. For metric units, it's newtons. So, but that's it for this first example.